The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship in the name of the child of Bethlehem, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are so glad that, this, that God has brought you here today. A special welcome to our visitors and uh, extended family that is home. It's good to see you again. And uh, we pray that you have a blessed celebration together. And for those of you that are visiting us for the first time, we are so grateful that God has brought you here today. Located on the center aisle of our pews, we have uh, welcome pads there, blue welcome pads. We do ask that you sign those and send them on down the way. I don't think we have one for the back narthex, so um, you guys get to be anonymous worshipers today. But uh, we see you, and we're glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> a special thanks to all those helping with these services today. We have five services today. It's a busy place. And so all of our musicians and ushers and greeters and bulletin folders, um, we are so grateful for you. It takes a lot of willing hands to make these services happen. A special thanks also to all those that donated, donated poinsettia plants today. As you can see, we have many here. And uh, you can check out that insert to see who they were donated in memory of. And also a special thanks to Milt Lewenberg um, and his family for the altar flowers that he donated in memory of his wife. Like I said, it's a busy day today. There is another service happening downstairs in the foundation um, right now. Uh, Pastor Scott is, is leading that one. He'll be up here later on in the service. And so uh, some of you might be interested in coming back at 11 tonight for the, the, the midnight service. Uh, um, uh, we would welcome you back. That one has Holy Communion. And then also tomorrow, Christmas Day, we have a service at 10 a.m. with Holy Communion. We invite you back for that service on the day of our Lord's birth. Um, that service tomorrow will also be live streamed, um, but it'll be on channel 10 on New Vera or 8 on Mediacom as opposed to the regular 7 o'clock, or 7, channel 7. Next Sunday is... Uh, um, New Year's Day, and we have our, our two services that day. Uh, there'll be an 8 o'clock and 10:10 service on New Year's Day. There are envelopes for the Joy to the World offering in, your, uh, in the pew pads or in your pews around the church here. Um, we're thankful for all of your support as we uh, look to finish the, the year uh, strong um, financially. <laughs> Um, any offerings that you would like on this year's tax return need to be in by noon on Friday the 30th here. Everything you need for the service is in the bulletin or on the screens in front of you. And so uh, as we rise to sing our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, let's greet one another with the peace of Christ.
Please join me in our Christmas litany. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Let us confess our sins to God and listen for his word of forgiveness. Almighty God, as we celebrate the birth of your only begotten Son, we confess how unworthy we are to receive such gracious love from you. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. We cannot free ourselves from our sinful nature, yet we dare to ask for your forgiveness because of the child of Bethlehem, whose name is Jesus, because he came to save his people from their sins. By his saving death and for his sake, forgive us and fill us with your righteousness. In the boundless mercy of Almighty God, Jesus came in human flesh to take the sin of all people onto himself and to put it to death on the cross. Jesus was born in order to forgive you and make you into a new person. So come to the manger and leave there all your guilt and shame. For in the name of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I tell you, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. You may be seated, and we want to thank uh, Sharon and Laura, the ringers of faith, and the faith singers for the gift of special music this morning.
The first reading for this Christmas Eve is from Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning in verse 2. The prophet declares, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Whoop. Getting a little hot in here. Thank you. The rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The second lesson comes from 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. For the devil, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter. <laughs> Singing that sound a little heavy. Yeah, was, uh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> chapter 4. My goodness. This one's not, this, beloved. See, that's much better. <laughs> beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his son as a savior of the world. 
God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. The word of the Lord. At this time, we want to invite children to come on up for Faith Lutheran Puppets. Christmas, boys and girls. Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas, Sally. It sure is, Grandpa. You know, I was just thinking about how cool the first Christmas must have been. It must have been very special. I like to look at our nativity scene at home and imagine what it must have been like. Do you think the stable had good Wi-Fi? <laughs> Seeing as how the cell phone wouldn't be invented for 2,000 years, probably not. Hmm. Then, how did they order pizza? <laughs> That's a great question, Sally. I'm not sure that the Bethlehem Domino's delivered. <laughs> That's rough. Uh, well, what kind of gender reveal did Joseph and Mary do? Did they have, like, blue balloons or exploding golf balls or some sort of blue smoke? You know the gender reveal happened by Angel. Gabriel told them that their baby would be a boy. Oh, yeah. Do you think that Mary and Joseph got matching tattoos of Jesus' name? I think they were marked with the cross of Christ. Oh, you're good. Are these the kind of things that you think about when you imagine what the first Christmas was like? Sure. And other things, like, did the camel have a car seat? Or, um, hmm. Like, what was Jesus' favorite cartoon? Or did they have the Johnny jump up? What kind of maternity leave did Mary get? You know, important stuff. Important stuff? Uh, you might be leaving out a few very important things. Like what? Jesus, um, what was Jesus' first Vikings jersey? 
Uh, Justin Jefferson. Oh, b- b- no, no, no. The most important thing is that Jesus was born for you. He was born to save us. He was born this because God loves us. Wow, that's good news. Did you hear that, kids? God loves us. He sure does. So Merry Christmas, kids. And happy birthday, Jesus. You guys can head back to your folks and let's rise for the reading of the gospel. The Christmas Gospel comes from Luke chapter 2, and I am in the right chapter this time. Starting in verse 1, in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace, peace, and Christmas blessings to you from God our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you hear what I hear? That's a pretty good Christmas Christmas song. It's, It's not the greatest, but it's far from the worst, right? I mean, it's way better than anything that Mariah Carey sings, right? 
And for our purposes, it asks a good question. Do you hear what I hear? And while I do not think that there were conversations between the night wind and the little lamb, I do think that there were some distinct sounds at the nativity scene. Of course, one of our favorite Christmas hymns is Silent Night. Soon we'll hold up candles and sing Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm and all is bright. And as we sing that, one thing becomes abundantly clear. The hymn writer has never been in a delivery room, right? <laughs> Silent and calm? Are you serious? Some of you remember the good old days when dads were banned from the delivery rooms. Now we're just in there and in the way. I just heard about a former youth of mine whose wife threatened to throw him out if he couldn't pull it together. <laughs> throw in the fact that for Joseph and Mary, there were no doctors, no nurses, no midwives, no epidurals or sanitary conditions. But there may have been some farm animals in there to help, so that's great. It was an emergency birth and a desperate spot. It was not silent or calm. There was nativity noise. It was chaos. Cows lowing for sure. Mary moaning in pain. Joseph panicking. And who let the boy with drums in here anyway? The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. And I hate to, to rip on another beautiful hymn, but really? Ever been around a baby? <laughs> Do you hear what I hear? Well, Andrea and I had the privilege of attending the Wheaton College Christmas concert a few weeks ago. It was magnificent. But the thing that stayed with me after the concert the most was, was not a musical piece but a poem written and read by a student. The author, Isis Toldson, wrote, Often I wonder how silent that night really was. If silence is apt to describe the sound of creation's first grasping inhale since Genesis. If silence is not our fickle attempt to sanitize the sounds of reality imploding. She writes, how could the sound of the infinite taking on finite flesh not send shockwaves that redirect fault lines? Do you think that, it was not, that there was not chatter in the secret places between time and place? Do you suggest they did not shudder at the sound of the word leaving womb and entering the world? Do you suppose that night was silent. I think it's safe to say that there was noise. There was nativity noise. There was holy noise. And yet, with all of that commotion, there was one noise that was missing. Verbum infans. That's Latin for the word speechless, the word inarticulate, the word as an infant, the word without a word. The poet T.S. Eliot latched on to this idea and wrote, the word without a word, the word within the world and for the world. The word was in the world and yet beyond cries and coos, was unable to say a word. Do you hear what I hear? Some of you are living in that world now. You live in a world in which the word was made flesh, in which Christ was born, in which the risen Christ is still present. And yet... You live without his word, without his word for you. 
We live in a world of nativity noise, of chaos, of franticness and busyness, of immediate need, where pain and panic and joy are abundant, and it drowns out the word. Can you hear what I hear? Well, what we hear in this noisy world is fear. Our news channels are driven by this. Fear of viruses, of politics, of severe weather, of free speech. We hear anger aimed at people different than us or people saying things that offend us or at horrible officialing that robs us of two touchdowns, right? Some anger is justified. We hear false promises of fulfillment when you accumulate enough stuff, a stuff, or you follow your dreams, or you give in to your desires. Do you hear what I hear? It's difficult because the noise is deafening. But do you see what I see? What do you see in the holy nativity? What do you see at Christmas? Did you know that there were 153 made-for-TV Christmas specials this season? I think Pastor Paul has seen most of them, right? <laughs> and in most of them, some sort of Christmas miracle, sorry about my microphone here, some sort of Christmas miracle is depicted. Hot single women finds hot single dads to date. Small businesses on the verge of bankruptcy are saved at the 11th hour. Children wish for family and togetherness, and the wish is granted. We even got to watch historical comebacks, right? <laughs> These are wonderful things, but not actually miracles. These are nice things and maybe even highly unlikely things, but these are explainable things. But the nativity scene is a different story. A virgin gives birth. Angelic choirs light up the midnight sky. And most miraculous, to you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. The Christ in swaddling clothes, the divine as a baby. Do you see what I see? But we don't have much capacity to see the truly miraculous today. Our see it to believe it worldview doesn't allow beliefs in things like virgin births and God's being born. So we limit our understanding of the miraculous to unlikely relationships or historical comebacks. But we live in the world of Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The Christmas miracle is as miraculous as it gets. And it really happened. At Caesar Augustus's decree, with Quirinius as governor in Podunk, Bethlehem, to Joseph of the line of David, and to a young virgin, Mary, Christ was born. Do you see what I see? Well, whether you hear what I hear, or see what I see, or not, it doesn't matter because you are here. Maybe you're here every Sunday, or maybe you're here with family, or maybe you're here because after all, it's Christmas. It doesn't matter, because I believe that the Holy Spirit has brought you here to hear, to hear from the Word himself. And whether you know the Word inside and out, or whether you've been living without the word. It doesn't matter, because now you are within earshot. So listen to what I say, 
For thus says the Lord, Unto you a child is born. Unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this Savior, this Messiah, this Word made flesh for you, this, this Word born without a word, well, he died in the same way. Even at the cross, the Word saves us in silence, as the prophet declared, like a sheep that was before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. But he is silent no more. For just as the heavens rejoice at his birth, so they rejoice even now as he gives you new birth, new life, because he forgives you all of your sins. Do you hear what I hear? And look around you. Do you see what I see? I see that you are not alone in believing this Christmas miracle. I see redeemed sinners, surrounded by redeemed sinners, clinging to the promise of Christmas, clinging to the word that broke that silence. So listen and see, and believe, treasure all of these words and ponder them in your heart. And then, like the shepherds, go, glorifying and praising God for all that you have heard and seen, as it has been told you. Thanks be to God.
We continue to worship God using now our Christmas gifts and offerings and our thanks to Mona and Laura for the gift of special music.
Let us pray together the prayer for Christmas. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we now uh, pass flame through the congregation, please remember always to dip an unlit candle so that less wax uh, will spill. And of course, be very watchful of all those that are around.
And now, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. When your candle is extinguished, let's rise to sing our closing hymn, Joy to the World. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. And a blessed and merry Christmas to you all.